the guys who Google alpha videos are never the guys who look like the out al- like nature's alpha. Mm. So I think Stephen Adams is more likely to align. They with look Jordan like Peterson. me, <laughs> and he's. Like- <laughs> Uh, just kidding (laughs) welcome to spinsters a podcast where we will see you in the lobby i'm jordan Haley's here harry's here sierra chicago sky fan is here and today we are joined by matt ellen tuck and marissa coleman of gaming society and their new youtube show called see you in the lobby to talk all things WNBA, WNBA playoffs, matchups, awards, all the things. My heart is on fire. I love it. Uh, Before we get started, though, this episode is brought to you by doTERRA. doTERRA's deep blue stick provides targeted, natural, and reliable relief without synthetic ingredients. Learn more at doTERRA.com slash spinsters. I want to actually start off with the new playoff format because you guys i think are probably experiencing this a little more analytically than me it's a pleasure being a wnba fan and not wnba media when you're nba media if that makes sense i feel like i've chosen a lane that's very much like i'm gonna i'm gonna consume this thing purely in a way that i enjoy it um which is a choice that you guys know you have to kind of you get to make sometimes and then other times you don't get to make but covering NBA you can get so burnt out that now I'm like I just want to see this thing as a fan I'm curious what you all think about the new format for me um there is a certain thrill in you know March Madness style like single elimination but where legends are made And where hate is made and where comebacks are made and everything is when you have rounds. Um, And that's kind of how you create all of this, like, mythology in basketball. So, loved it. But what did you guys think? Marissa and I have have varying opinions. Marissa, you want to go first? Sure. I I look at it from a player's perspective. And I don't know if I'll ever be able to look at basketball from any other lens just from my career. I think it's ridiculous. Professional sports, there should never be single elimination. If anybody can have an off shooting night, foul trouble, one injury, like it just doesn't make sense. At the professional level, teams are comprised of great players. So it's, it's, you should have a series to play that out. I just, single elimination, I hate it. And this new format's just as bad. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> okay, we're back, we're back into a series. There's no single elimination, but for, the higher seed to get the two home games and then you still went on the road. You need to play the closeout game at the, like, that's not, that's not being rewarded for your hard work during the season to put yourself in a position to, to be the number one, two, three C like it's, it's silly. And there's a reason why the NBA has never tested this out because it's dumb. <laughs> it, it, just, it, 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 it just comes, it comes down to money. And that's what we know so much like the format in the, in the W is, I think, all series in the W should be five games. That, that's the most fair to me. And I think we're getting to a point where there's more parity. Um, the, 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 you're kind of craving for more games in some of these series because they're, they're so good. I mean, the Aces Seattle series, I wish that was a game that could be seven games. We know that's mm-hmm. going to be uh, really good. But I think it, it, the new format, single elimination, both are dumb. <laughs> <laughs> I feel Don't okay. settle. I feel a little bit of what what Haley's talking about, obviously, because I'm watching the sport way more from a fan perspective. And like, I want there to be the the best potential for moments to happen, like a thing that we talk about from a single elimination game that carries on forever. Like the Dierica Hamby heave is something that I'll talk Mm -hmm. about for the rest of her career because it was so awesome. And even in the ways in single elimination where we talk about Diana Taurasi having won like whatever it was like 12 straight single elimination games. Like that just created a moment for us to mythologize like the, the legend of Diana Taurasi from, and I didn't like there being like last year's format. There was two single elimination rounds. I didn't like that. I think the first round being single elimination was really fun though. Cause you're, you're messing with teams here that that probably aren't going to win. Right. Like I know the Mm -hmm. Chicago bad example now that they kind of pulled things off as a 500 team last year, but that almost never happens. 
So I'm okay with that being single elimination. This year, like things are still kind of working out, right? We're still getting that single elimination feel because we're having, you know, the number two and number three seeds in a do or die first round game that, you know, kind of just it happened that way. I'm with Marissa that this game should not be on the road. Like Connecticut and Chicago are like te- the second and third best teams in the league having to, to do a closeout on, on the road makes no sense. But I am for a format that creates a chance for us to like be in shock about something. So I don't know. I, I'm not I'm not hating what I'm seeing right now, but uh, I just want that maybe a one 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 format change next year instead of one game. One it, it's just too unfair to the players <laughs> and to the teams. Like okay, it's okay. that. Like you, you work <laughs> so hard so all season. Up. Like let's let's we'll you know, use Seattle as an example. Stewie missed a lot earlier in the season. If they put her ahead Stewie from the beginning, they probably would be a top seed. It worked mm-hmm. out for Seattle, but yeah. what if it didn't? Like what if it was single elimination and they lost that first game? Seattle is one of three teams, in my opinion, that has a legit chance of winning the championship. So there's too many factors to put in to just put it into, okay, like, let's hope we get this viral moment. Let's hope we get this half-court heave. Marissa, like, that's some of us that's need not retweets. the game. Some of us need retweets. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's about the clout. content. It's, it's all for clout for Matt. <laughs> <laughs> Always is. I I agree in the sense of, you know, with the single elimination, I think of my sparks, you know, NECA had a migraine in the single elimination game last year. And it's like the one day she woke up with the migraine, that's the day that we're going to our whole postseason chances are are based off of that. She could have come back the next game and drop 30. We don't know. She didn't get that opportunity. And I think Without single elimination games, it's just more games. I think I'm in, in favor for just more basketball games. That's why I would want, you know, every series to be five games. I think everyone I, – I don't know if the first rounds – because you look at this Mercury team and you're like, would you want to see a five-game <laughs> series with them? Like, you already know that they were going to lose that. So that's where I'm like, okay, I can see a single elimination game. But if they did – if Shea Petty never went down – if, uh, you know, she had 30 points instead of getting injured and then they did win that single elimination game. But then the next round, we know that's not going to it's not going to carry through. Chicago really broke that last season of being able to win the single elimination games, go on to the championship. And then we saw what happened. It changed immediately. <laughs> and I think this season, if a if a lower seed team beats a higher seed team on the road, it will change immediately because that's not we know that it's dumb it's gonna change if that happens i feel like the and jordan to your point oh sorry go ahead, man. no i was just gonna say i feel like the playoff format just changes every three years anyway yeah literally uh jordan to your to your point like yeah some of those early rounds like phoenix we knew like they, they didn't stand a chance but if you compare it to nba i don't watch the first two rounds of the playoffs because it's so boring like I don't really watch those mm-hmm. semis in the finals, so why not? What we can let's test out single elimination with them, but why don't we? Because it doesn't make sense. So maybe go to a three game series. Like so, just like to compare the two. Like it's just not. And I mean, Matt's already heard this story, but I have. I definitely hate single elimination because That's Tamika awesome Catchings. <laughs> I do. Tamika Catchings last season we had single elimination game against Phoenix at home in Indy, and we lose. We were the better team. We would have beat them in a series. But Tamika catching one of the greatest to ever play this game doesn't get a chance mm. to keep the series going. It was none of us could shoot. Like we could not hit anything. <laughs> it was just one of those games. Yeah. And, I like, Marissa, you mean, remember, I, I dug into the box score. You actually had a good game. I was going to roast you, but I couldn't. <laughs> <laughs> But as a whole, like, that, that doesn't matter. We lost this. Like, for me, like, I always think about that. Like, Tamika Catchings, her mm-hmm. retirement season doesn't get a chance to play another game in the playoffs. That doesn't make sense to me. Yeah. yeah. No, and they're, like, to your point about not being able to compare it to the NBA, they would never do single el- elimination, even on the newest, lowest stakes possible, which is the play-in game. If you look at it, it's perfectly calculated that there are so many things that go into it. It's calculated home and away. It's calculated – um, that it's not just a single elimination game and that these two teams, because they are putting these seeds in and they're instituting this new thing, they knew they had to be super careful to get owners on board with it. And so you see a kind of parody that didn't exist in the first round of the W playoffs and the, you know, well, I don't even, was it the last six 
year seasons that was two single elimination games. Like I, yeah, there was a much more careful calculation going into a play in game, play in tournament. Even it wasn't just a game; it was a tournament. Um, So yeah, you wouldn't see that in the NBA. There's just no chance. And um, I think what makes something like March Madness so special is that it's all throughout like those are the stakes they're the exact same but there's just a certain thing in professional sports if you look across the board like this is where rivalries are made is in games two and four and where this is where coaches kind of become like we were saying you know legends like because they're able to counter certain things Mm -hmm. so um giving them that grace and that chance to kind of do some myth making and storytelling and, you know, narrative driving. And like, can you believe that this player came back to do this? Those are all the kinds of things that you're setting these uh, teams and players and fan bases up for when you give them more games. I think eventually, like down the road, it'll be a long and winding road and it'll end up just probably being the same as the NBA (laughs) where every every series is the same amount of games but yeah Yeah. obviously nothing's coming easy to this league so I think it also starts you know everything goes back to expansion with the W it's 12 teams and eight teams make the playoffs it's like we need more more of the cream of the crop (laughs) of who's making it to the playoffs I think that would make it um more interesting more exciting in the sense of a series with like yes these are the top teams because in the w you can barely be at 500 and still make the playoffs and we don't want to watch you in a first round of five games if you barely made it knowing that you you could even have a losing record and still make the the playoffs with this format currently so everything goes back to expansion with the w but especially the playoffs (laughs) true I agree. It's that it's the W not cutting corners. Like that's one of my biggest gripe with the league is they cut too many quarters and corners and that's not going to help the league grow. Like you've seen viewership ex- expand every single season. The more you invest in it, the more eyeballs that are on it. And this has been such an exciting season. Like don't mm-hmm. cut the corners, do your best to create opportunities for more people to put their, their eyes on, it. especially right now where there's that interim between start of NFL season NBA when like this is really you know the only thing to watch like it's a prime opportunity to to get the product out there like I understand it's for the travel and this and that but it's like you have to really invest in it you can't cut the corners like put all the resources into it and that's really when you'll see the game grow in my opinion charter Mm -hmm. some planes let the rich people be rich people (laughs) right let (laughs) let them let them do it spread the wealth what's the point What's Loot the, the air. <laughs> yeah, this is the only time you're ever going to see me cheering for private charter <laughs> <laughs> If I'm saying pollute the air, then yeah. <laughs> um, that's what I, I was thinking about. The, the Liberty story was all I was thinking about this last month, or maybe it was like a month and a half ago when uh, Kylie Jenner was getting so much heat for like taking a 20 minute flight. To go across, like a, and then across we, a we state, un, we, un, we started unearthing lists of celebrities. Yeah. Who are actually, yeah. all people suck too. <laughs> um, yeah, if you're under, you know, whatever the average WNBA height is, maybe we start making a law. The same super PAC that is making hashtag led jail vote mm. is now <laughs> also running on the platform of if you are under the median WNBA height, no charter flights until they are allowed to get charter Kelsey flights. Plum, you can get on the flight, I promise. <laughs> <laughs> we'll allow it. Matt, Matt, and I disagree. Matt and I have had this discussion and disagree. I don't, like, I'd like to see other things happen to, with the league before charter flights. Like, I think mm. if you put a level of importance, I, I think it does charter flights for me isn't the next big step the league needs to, needs to make. Do we need to be flying Southwest Boarding group C? No. <laughs> I think like the next step for travel should be everybody flies business class and then having better contingency plans for when there are delayed flights and because that's going to be inev- inevitable. But unless there's their partnering and getting some deal with chart like a charter company, they're too expensive. Like forty, yeah. fifty, sixty thousand dollars per flight. 
for an entire season. I think that money could be well spent and in investing back into the league to actually make it grow to, to your point, expansion teams, you know, more marketing just to get mm-hmm. more, you know, like fans in the, in the seats. I think like that should be like more down the road for level of importance. Here's the thing though. If Joe size is going to empty his pockets, here we are. <laughs> <laughs> let's, let's we'll take it. We accomplish all of it. But that's the thing. Is he going to do it for the whole league or is he just going to do it for New York? Because then that creates an unfair advantage for New York. Because if I'm a free agent, I'm going to want to go to New York because I get to fly charter. No, for sure. But I think that should probably just put more like pressure on the rest of ownership throughout the league. Like step up or get out. Like we'll be able to find more rich people. I promise there are lots of them. <laughs> Um, no, I, I agree with you on that. And that's what I'm like excited with what Vegas is doing and New York. And I mean, Seattle has always been a first class uh, organization. But when you have owners that actually believe in the league, Houston. they're going to put the reasons. It's like there's a mm-hmm. lot of owners in the past. It's kind of been like a checkbox. Like I, I can say I owned a professional sports team. But with some of these owners um, and leadership you see coming in now, they actually want to see the league grow. They're investing their money and. I, that's going to force not only other teams to match point, but the league to step their shit up. Yeah. yeah. I, I really think this off season is going to be like the really big test because I think we all have that feeling that Stewie's going to New York, right? Like she took the visit last year. Yep. It was very calculated, made very public that she had a meeting with Joe Sy. It's also was made very public that Joe Sy was like chartering his team out to Italy or whatever. Like, Stewie saw what what's happening over there, wanted to be a part of it. And even if like Cy couldn't directly give her a load of money indirectly, that definitely influenced where Stewie's head was at last year. And if she signs this year, yeah, the rest of the league has to be a little scared, right? Like the maybe the best player in the league just decided to go where the guy was emptying his pockets and showing he where really the money resides. Exactly. <laughs> go where the money resides. <laughs> and money to your, reside, to your point, Marissa, too, it's like yeah, we can have all these chartered flights and everyone, all the players are well rested getting on the court. But if there was no marketing to even spread the news that there was a game today, then they're playing, you know, not in front of the biggest audiences that they could because of the marketing. I say this all the time when I've been to, I don't even know how many Sparks games I went to this this season. I would just look around and be like, nobody knew that there was a game today. Like, no no one in L.A. knew, because if they did, they would be here. L.A. loves their basketball. So putting it between marketing efforts or expansion, having more teams, more games to be played, there is a hierarchy. But charter flights or just better flight situations has to happen. Izzy Harrison, currently on the Dallas Wings, their flight got canceled uh, a couple days ago, and she just tweeted Kathy Engelbert and was like, Kathy, our flight got canceled. Can we get a charter? And then her quote tweet was her in front of a charter saying, thank you, Kathy. <laughs> like, if, yeah, that's that was the, awesome. if it's an emergency that was charter, and that, that can that, be a thing. That should be the contingency plan. Like, everybody should just fly business class. And then there is, if there is a cancellation, then you just get on a, a, a private jet. Like, that makes more sense to me than mm-hmm. a league that's already, like, stretched thin for resources to spend that money on on charter flight you're gonna start to see teams scheduling their flights during like thunderstorms (laughs) 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 whoops we need a charter (laughs) yeah the uh i think the the thing that hurts like hearing that conversation because obviously you're in it and you're like no there are other things that are more important and nobody's gonna tell you you're wrong about that what pains me is like this is when we look at the net worth of people who own these teams and who own uh, stakes in um, their sponsorship and promotion and everything, like the biggest trick rich people will play on us is that there are is a limitation to these resources. And that's what they've told us when really like you look at what these owners can afford and it's like, why are we prioritizing resources that are – things that are essential to a league. I was watching the uh, HBO doc um, about the Lakers and they talk about, they literally, they have this clip of Jerry Buss in the 80s, maybe early 90s. And he's like, 
criticizing the NBA for their lack of marketing. And he's like, I don't know what the fuck you guys think we're going to be able to do when you're not even promoting the games. Mm -hmm. And the the thing that um, pains me is that it's such recent history that the NBA was struggling majorly before Larry Bird and Magic Johnson. And what kind of happened at the same time as them coming in is them really understanding the benefit of marketing. Um, And so I just wish that it wasn't a matter of, you know, five people on a podcast being like, well, this is where their resources should be spent the most. Like that they don't have this cap on resources that we're imagining that they're working with. It's just that that's what they've told us they're willing to invest. So there's like, you know, the actual what they're willing to what the resources can be allotted to. And then um, there's the other conversation of like, should we be talking about what they're actually pouring in and not pouring in? Um, let's take a quick break and then let's talk about uh, Stewie and the storm and the series I'm most excited about. Okay, let's talk about Storm and Aces. The Storm and Aces, yes. I'm excited. Can I give you guys my um, very uh, like layman's read? on this sure. and then you can tell me you can give me the truth i feel like the aces don't have to figure out as much going into this and whereas seattle has to figure out a lot and they're going to have to keep readjusting and that's my very simple person's read okay you, you gotta explain it a little more what, i feel what, like what the does aces- seattle have to figure out like the, a defensive strategy against this, whereas the Aces, it seems more clear cut. It feels like th- without having to struggle too much, the Aces are going to be able to play chess in a way that Seattle's trying to figure out how to play chess when right now they only have checkers pieces. I love mm-hmm. you, Sue. I didn't mean that I would in, say, a, I would in say a rude way. I would say it's a little bit of a hot take you got going on, Haley. Yeah. Is it? Yeah. 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 All I right. <laughs> I would say so. Well, I think, right, we got the biggest question in the whole series is still, is De'Erica Hamby playing? Yes. Because that matters, one, because De'Erica Hamby is such an awesome player, but two, because Vegas has a very defined hierarchy of players. It's like they have this top five, and then they have the, like, we really, I'm hoping that two of these next five are going to play well today because no one's ever really super consistent in that group. Mm -hmm. So De'Erica is going to be, like, the biggest question to me thoughts yeah i agree with that i think she just the rebounding the presence that dierica hamby has on the floor with her hustle and everything um is something that seattle is going to have to you know think about and and adjust to but i I think it's like it is i think simplest terms it's like how do we stop asia wilson and the matchup between brianna stewart and asia wilson is that's what all eyes are going to be on. Um, to take a sharp left, my hot take is that it's going to be like, you know, those old Buffalo Wild Wings commercials where it's going to be completely rigged so we get more, <laughs> most super <laughs> as possible. So I think Aces could win by 20 for two games, but there's going to be like, oh, ball goes out of bounds or there's three technicals in a row, five Aces players get get ejected so sue bird can continue to be on television but i'm the one rigging it basically (laughs) behind it the whole time they got scott foster (laughs) (laughs) his first wba game (laughs) yeah but how do you i mean i feel like that's kind of what i'm saying is that figuring out how to handle um seattle's best players isn't as much of uh uh challenge as figuring out how to handle Asia. That's kind of what I'm saying with the chess v checkers v I think the aces just aren't going to have to not that they're not going to have to like deeply think about their strategy, but I, they just feel outmatched to me. But again, simple I woman. think we're giving the simple aces woman. way too much credit here. I think they are they they are a great great team. We can't deny that, but I think a lot have been so polarized with them this season because they, because of Becky, because how they started this season, they're a fun team to follow. But 
that's not necessarily going to translate. To Matt's earlier point, they have no bench. And their yeah. starters played so many minutes this season that if they get into foul trouble or worse, their bench has no experience. Mm-hmm. You switch it, go to Seattle's bench. They have Epiphany Prince. They have Jantel Lavender. They have Breon January. They have Ezzy. Like they have three vets coming off their bench that have playoff experience, championship experience in Bree January. Like mm-hmm. their, the benches, I give that to Seattle. Asia and Stewart are going to cancel each other. They're 20 and 10 every night. Like that's, we know we're getting from them. They're going to cancel each other. Uh, Jewel and Chelsea, in my opinion, that's just, that's going to be another cancel out. It's going to come down to who Kelsey Plum can guard mm-hmm. and who Sue can guard. Like those, Kelsey's going to give her numbers. It's like, who are they going to be able to guard? Like that's, that's really to me. Yeah. If wh- whoever, if Sue can guard or Kelsey can guard, I think that's going to, that's going to be a big thing. Cause they both are players that usually get like the fifth, like, I don't want to say the fifth worst player on the floor, but they get the least, <laughs> the, the least threatening player, um, you know, to score on the other team. I think that, I think the eight, we're just giving the aces too much credit. And Seattle, they they've done it before. Vegas has that they have to prove prove that they can get over that hump. Seattle's been there, done it quite a few times. I mean, Sue played amazing against DC. Like you can tell, she wants it. Um, yeah, I, I I don't know. I I think we're the Aces. I'm not saying that. I I honestly I want Seattle. It's too too close to call, in my opinion. But I don't think it's going to be. I, I, I don't I don't necessarily agree it's you know aces have the oh, advantage. No, yeah. I appreciate that. I um the other thing like you were talking about the bench, it's just that in playoff series, like benches never usually matter less because you are rolling with your main people in in playoff series. Like you are no longer pulling, but like you said, I disagree the aces with have that. had a long <laughs> Really? Why why have why haven't Connecticut got over the hump? Oof, Connecticut yeah. Center, they don't have a bench. You're not the bench. The bench is not going to give you 20 minutes, but you need you need at least two solid players to come off the bench because again, foul trouble. If somebody gets hurt, if somebody's winded, matchup might not. Somebody might have an off night. Like you need to have at least one or two reliable people to come off the bench. Mm-hmm. You, there's just there's just too many unknowns. But to your point, yeah, like it's definitely like that starting five, top six that you're rolling with most of the time, but you have to have a bench come playoff time. Something. And especially for Vegas. Their their stars have played a lot of minutes this season. And Seattle oh, likes to run. And adding Gabby to the dynamic made them even a more uh, fast paced team in transition. So now Vegas has it's gonna be a fast paced game. They're gonna need and in the playoffs too, like sorry, I mean I keep going on about this. Um <laughs> but you need those breathers. So if if, if I'm putting in somebody that's going to turn the ball over three times. Asia needs a break. I'm put, she's being subbed in. Her sub turns the ball over three times, gives up six points, misses a rebound. Like those little things are going to make a big difference in a playoff series. Yeah, and I think too, it's like it is a, it is about the bench, but it's also about the superstars. Like I think I read something. This is a series that there's seven number one picks. This is the first time that that's ever happened in the wow. WNBA or the NBA. So you look at Seattle. We haven't mentioned Tina Charles yet. Like, Tina Charles is a star. And if I'm Asia Wilson, I'm like, I'm winded. I'm fighting through Stewie. And then the next line of defense is Tina Charles. And then Sue Bird is nipping at my ankles. Like, I'm, I need a break. Like, I'm tired. And I think that's definitely the – advantage that Seattle has is that from all areas they can have you know Jewel Lloyd shoot an outside three but then you have to worry about Stewie and then Sue is going to pass and Tina Charles is going to get the rebound so there is a lot of people that you have to worry about for the aces they have the same thing but everybody has to have that amazing shooting night they're going to have to run up the floor they're going to have to do a lot of things um I hope we get an overtime game like every single time because I <laughs> want this to be a seven game series. There's it's too many great players. It's too much good basketball that's potentially could be played. Um, and I think whoever wins this series wins the championship. That's my 
stay. I agree. Se- I'm with Seattle you. upsets. They're going all the way, and Sue Bird's getting her fifth ring. Like it, it has to be that way. I agree. And it's so crazy you brought up the point about all those number one picks. That just is a like the biggest example to your point about why we need more WNBA teams. It's never yes. happened in any other league because it wouldn't. There's too, there's too much. There's too many teams. There's too many opportunities. Like that should be like the case study, and it needs to be right on Cassie's desk as to why we need more teams immediately because that should never happen. I'm sorry, that should never happen. Which, which also, this includes an Aces team that got three number one picks in a row. <laughs> like, yes. When is that going to happen again? <laughs> Oh man, yeah. I every team in the W is a super team. I say that every time because uh, Jordan, the fever is. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, in like ten years, Oof. they have the potential to be a super team. Ooh, ten years. <laughs> oh, sorry. Okay, so who are you guys picking then for this, Marissa? Oh, you picked me first. I'm going to go with Seattle. I'm going to go with Seattle. I'm going to give the edge to them, I think. Sue's playing great. She wants it. The team wants it for her. Stewie's having a phenomenal season. Um, And then, you know, Jordan brought up Tina Charles earlier. I think this is – Tina feels that sense of urgency. This is her chance to finally get that ring she's been chasing. Mm -hmm. And there's no pressure on her. It's not all on Tina's shoulders to get – her team over that hump she's sometimes the third option on this team so she can just kind of play free so um and and the bench i i I do i do think that 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 makes a difference i'm gonna give the the edge to seattle no you have convinced me fully i'm like wow i came in really hot i was like look i think the aces have it figured out (laughs) never mind (laughs) i'm glad i'm glad i didn't submit that bovada yet (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> it's minim- It's a minimized window right now, but when we are done recording, I am clearing that bed. <laughs> never heard of them. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, oh, betting for a that. different Vegas team. Oh, okay. I'm also going with Seattle, though. I think Seattle, I'm going to take Seattle in four. I'm going to even give you a number for it. Way to go, Matt. I was hoping I didn't have to do that. Yeah, no. no, honestly, there's never any – nothing good ever comes from volunteering up a number because <laughs> in terms of a matchup, you have a pretty even shot of looking good, right? There's You can go one of two ways, but when you add a number into the equation, Here's folks, the we call that a parlay. The aces are going to roast me regardless, so I might as well just just give them a little something to to relish it. I'm still going to go with the aces just because I came in so hot that now I feel like I can't retract completely, but I'm not going to to oversimplify anymore, and I'm going to give some due damn credit (laughs) to Seattle's bench. So aces, but it's not going to be easy. This has been very difficult for me, and I feel like I'm coming to terms with, uh, you know... The person I'm the biggest fan of in the W, I've been like preparing myself for her going out, and uh, you know you're you're putting her and out, you're, and you're still yeah, you're so I was about to say, there. and you're you're pushing her out the door. I'm pretty realistic. <laughs> like I would equate her, my fandom of her is like my fandom to LeBron, and I'm like hyper realistic with him every single oh, year. Man. I'm not like I don't have any illusions about it it's not that kind of fandom like college fandom's different i'm like louisville's winning the title every year <laughs> um but with with my like players in the hey, professional hey, league i was really liking you until you said lebron yeah I was about to say, you <laughs> like we were like i was like man like shoot. but then you said that and like it went nose die <laughs> Harry, we're cutting that out. <laughs> or just edit it if you can like compile those words to be like mm-hmm. just Marissa being like, Yeah, I really liked you. And then cut out the butt. <laughs> just end it there. <laughs> Wait, Jordan, who do you have? Aces or, or Storm? I'm wearing my Aces uh jersey today. Um I have the Aces winning it all. They have to make it through this series. I I don't think it's going to be easy, especially playing Seattle at home. Um, that Seattle are- is hard to win there. Like, it's so hard to win there. So, it's yeah. Asia is my, in my, is my MVP. 
which I know we'll get to voting later in awards. So I have her winning and the Aces. This is their year. This is their year to win it all. It has to be this year. They played so well all season long. You guys are looking at me with okay. pure no, disappointment. No, no. No, and it's okay. It's okay. <laughs> Here's the <laughs> thing. Garrett makes a great point. So on Marissa and I's show, we have weekly bets where the other person has to take a shot if they lose that bet. And now it seems like there's a pretty clear divide. Team CU in the lobby are storm people. Mm-hmm. Team Spencers are aces people. Um, if you will indulge us uh, in our one shot or one beverage equivalent, whichever you prefer, bet. I think that we got to get this done. Yeah, of course. Of course. Of course. Okay. All right. We'll see you at the end of uh, this four game series when the storm wins. <laughs> so we, just, we just have to bet the winner of the series and the loser takes a shot or the winner takes a shot. I don't know. No, no, no. You, the, 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 the shot, <laughs> you could take the a shot, shot is, regardless, Haley. The shot, is supposed to, the shot is supposed to be punishment, but like maybe okay. we'll have to change the rules for Haley. <laughs> just wanted to clarify. <laughs> Uh, okay, fair enough. Um, but don't say I'm not a Seattle person. I'm just a, I'm not a believer at the moment. Yes, yes. Sorry. Although I'm... more than ever, <laughs> literally the <laughs> the minute Marissa was like, "This is why you're wrong," I was like on my notes. Like, okay. <laughs> Here comes the apology. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um okay well do you guys want to talk about awards? Do you want to talk about another series? We have the elephant in the room. If you're watching on. YouTube is that Harry's background is hashtag let JL vote. We decided about five minutes before we went on that we sh- we want Jordan to have a vote. Um, although I'm on the record as saying I don't really like Matt. I think you have a vote. I don't really see any like good benefit of having a vote. People just you wow. know are mean about it because everyone deserves an opinion but apparently some people get to put that opinion into public record and contribute to the biggest award in the league um and not saying you don't deserve it but i just again like people as media i cannot imagine having or wanting a vote because it just seems like an enormous burden and- i cry every year yeah i like literally <laughs> i talk to WNBA PR. i'm always I send it, it's due at like 11.59 the night of or whatever. It's like 11.52 and I'm like, I'm sorry. I just finally did it. I don't want to look at this ever again. <laughs> There's like sweat. There's not. I'm just like, I have my group chats with every other media person. Like, who did you guys pick has been open. Like, it's, yeah, it's, it's it feels like a test almost. And it's like, then you're, mm. then you send it out into the world. Here's the other thing I don't like. It's like some people then, don't tell other people. I don't know what the right what the right way to do it about to do this is because I think if you publicize your votes, you are like opening yourself up to criticism that you don't need or want or deserve. But if you keep it closed, then like some people have ridiculous votes where I'm like, did you did you watch a game this year? Mm-hmm. Like there has to be like some <laughs> there has to be like some balance here. I'm a person who always publicizes what I do or who I vote for. And then I take the criticism and then feel bad about myself for a week. And then I redo it next year. But, Ethics. <laughs> um, yeah. How I don't many know. media members get to vote, Matt? I think it's like 56 or something like that. 50 something. Wow. Um, that's that's uh, condensed compared to the NBA. We just looked this mm-hmm. up before is to make sure that the, the formats were similar. Um, and that is that is smaller. Who did? So what vote do you want to talk? What vote do you have um, the most issue with? Jordan, that you want to talk about? Well, I'm I MVP. Think, I think the MVP is the is the biggest one that has. I thought it was a clear winner, but to some, it is not. Um, I want you guys to talk this this time because I'm like, there's definitely a clear winner. But last time, I definitely also thought something, and then <laughs> <laughs> I listened to everyone else, and I was wrong. <laughs> so, wait, so, so who? who yeah, everyone's Matt. saying on three. Oh, okay. Oh, I like that. Ooh. I like that. All right. One, two, three. Asia, Asia Wilson. Wilson. Okay. okay. Yeah. We're there. We're there. There we go. We're there. <laughs> I will say though, it was not clear. It was not clear cut for me. That was one of those that I sweated mm. on for like most of the final hours. Um, like I feel like here's here are a couple of things. If you you have there's so many ways to look at it. Like if you're mm. a pure stats nerd and like all you do is look at the advanced numbers which like 
listen, everyone has their own place in this in this sport that we love. But if you're one of those people, the numbers all spit out and stay stewy. If you're a person who like loves the narrative building of like whose season was this really? Like when we look back at 2022, who are we going to think of? Then then it's Asia, right? Like the Aces were the number one seed. The, for a, a whole month, we like kind of wrote off every other team. For like, The first month of May, they were tearing through their schedule and we were like, this is the Aces season to lose. Like they're the best team. Becky Hammond un- unlocked everybody. So like mm-hmm. there are a bunch of ways you can configure it. I do think that uh asia and stewie i also had this battle when asia won in 2020 and i picked asia but i also felt the same way where i was debating the two for a while i think that these are very clearly the two best players in the league they're what like 28 and 26 i think years old now like we're gonna be having this argument five plus more times um maybe stewie will be in new york when we have those arguments but uh i think that this is really good for the league in the sense that we have two very awesome players who will probably never play on the same team, which means they're going to compete against each other for a long time. We're going to have some rivalries about it. Also two powerhouse colleges that they come from, which also helps like bring the fan base in to care more, especially when like a UConn great has a South Carolina challenger. Like that's ideal for, for getting more people involved. So yeah. I love the debate. I know I'm going to cry about it. I do feel really good about picking <laughs> Asia though. Cause I really think she did deserve it. Agreed. That's, that's my answer. Beautiful I answer. <laughs> That's I have it because it's in my brain because I, I like had to figure out what my answer was for so long. Like, yeah, he, re- he, re- he really was like <laughs> sad over this. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was going to say like with Stewie, she's so damn consistent and will get like mm. silently kill you with 25 and 10. Mm-hmm. So sometimes I think that like works against her for, for in these conversations because we're almost just so accustomed to her being this just like smooth, silent killer in many ways. It's like we really talk about like when Stewie has 30, then that's when it's like, oh, like everybody's like really talking. But we're just, she's 20 and 10 every night. Yeah. And you, if you watch her play, you look up like, oh shit, Stewie has 24. So I think sometimes, like, because she's just so good and so mm-hmm. efficient and so smooth, I think that works against her in these conversations because we're just, we're spoiled with her greatness. Yeah. And not to, not to bring up LeBron again because. Also oh, not his biggest fan. I'm sorry. I'm <laughs> sorry. But it is a little bit of like that, you know? Like LeBron could potentially win MVP every year. That's that's LeBron apologists, that's their number one thing. My but little because violin. I know. <laughs> but because he is, you know, so consistent, just using him as an example, you kind of overlook him. And I think too with Asia, last season with Liz, she did have to step back and she wasn't able to really spread her wings with you know the Bill Lambeer slow post basketball that they were playing and so everyone kind of I don't know if we forgot but we were just like oh yeah she's doing okay now you take Liz away she's really able to spread her wings and then we're reminded like yeah she is this superstar this MVP that we were able to see in 2020 when Liz wasn't there. So it was kind of like that year gap of people still talking about how great she was, but her being like, yeah, I'm still that one, like this season. And having the storyline, the coaches, having the number one overall team, I hope helps her in that advantage. Like, you know, we talk about all the time, the fever. They had a great team, you know, people had great, seasons but they're the last in the league they only won five games so they're not in the conversation the aces were number one they were winning they were plowing through teams that's where the leverage comes for asia for me as well yeah and matt well you were talking about the divide between uh the super analytics um viewers and media and you know everyone who consumes it and then the narrative people i also think there's a third bubble and this is overlooked a lot in the nba too um which i obviously like am more uh although i don't have a vote like um it's in my face a little bit more like who's um been voted for for what and who's voting for who etc and the third lane is just people who are watching basketball and like that's their main consumption and it's not so paired with either stats or so paired with narrative what i mean by that 
like being paired with the narrative is maybe they're not on basketball Twitter all the time and um, or they're not on NBA stats dot com um, all the time. And not to oversimplify that person or their experience, but there is just the party where it's like I watch a lot of this, but I'm not necessarily consuming it through this like alternate lens um, that's giving me that's informing me on it in a different way. I like to put my dad in that party a lot Hmm. um, and myself before I was involved in that's like my ideal way of consuming it. Um, And that person's pick would be Asia also Mm. this year, just like the pure I'm watching it. And it seems like they are doing the dual task of influencing the league and influencing their team in a way that is superior to everyone else. That's or at least that's what I think. Yeah. I like that thought. That's that was a. I, I wish I was in that third bubble of of people. It would be nice. Yeah, <laughs> retirement <laughs> dreams for <laughs> retirement. <laughs> um, let's take a break, and then I want to talk about the sky and the liberty. Yes, go oh. liberty. This one I really don't have a read on. Um, we can come back, Harry. Do you have a little plea for the liberty, or just your play in the home team? And also their um, merch is so nice. I think that they are going to win it all. I think that they have the most okay. talented team. I think <laughs> the Brooklyn, right. the the Barclays faithful are going to stand up. And I think that if they do get into the next round, then I'll probably go to a game. So I hope they, <laughs> I hope they, I hope they win. I was uh, going to say you should go tonight. I know I can't go. I can't go tonight, but I, I can't want imagine to. how expensive the tickets are. Honestly, it's not too bad. I I'm mean, curious. I, yeah, I live near Barclays too. It's it's fun when a Liberty game is going on. Like you can tell around the arena. It's a it's a it's a fun vibe. I love that. Um. So what? Tell me, <laughs> tell me about this series, <laughs> because I can be over. Like, um, I'm one of those people who when I watch like one game i'm like this is the greatest team to have ever lived and i'm feeling (laughs) pretty swayed right now in a certain direction as i'm sure you guys can guess um that i don't think is reasonable to be swayed sierra you can also i don't know if you're um plan if i don't know if you even if you don't have your mic and you want to weigh in since you're a sky fan you can also weigh in but yeah what should i be thinking marissa please tell me (laughs) New York's about to go on vacation. They're about to. <laughs> <laughs> they're, about to they're about to pack their bags and head overseas. They're going to book their trips to somewhere nice. It's, uh, it's going to no. be a double digit. Marissa, your explanation. Your explanation, though, please share. So I, after I, I told Matt after Game One, I knew. New York didn't stand a chance the rest of the series the way they were celebrating after that game. Mm. They were they they were celebrating like they didn't they didn't they did not come into that game thinking they could win. So for me, I look at that and I'm like, oh, like they thought that like they're shocked they won too. Mm. So I just, they didn't have the confidence going to like they literally were shocked. You don't celebrate after you won one game in the series if you feel like you belong if you expected to win. You shake hands. You go into the locker room, you shower, and you get ready for game two. But they were like chest bumping and all hype and like <laughs> they, surprises on their face. Like, uh uh-uh. They looked like a 16 and 20 team that just won a game <laughs> against the Raiders. <laughs> it was a Tim- Timberwolves complex of after was. that playing game. Oh, that's a great that point. That's a good point. Yeah. That's a great point. Um, and Chicago has too much experience, they have yeah. way too much experience. And they've all been there before, and they've been on both sides of the closeout game scenarios. I don't even think they're going to be nervous going into this game. They're just like, all right, we have to handle business. We let one slip away. It's just this is this yeah. this season's think, journey. And I agree. the Liberty are too deep into the rebuild to like be celebrating like this. At least that's <laughs> how I feel. You know, like it was kind of like it was kind of like oh, like the Liberty are like a thing now. When Sabrina got drafted, and it looked like they were starting to like have some sort of an identity. But like you brought in Benaj and Natasha Howard. Now, like you have good pieces. You have Sandy Brondello as your coach. Like you guys should have been better than a below five hundred team. So. Mm-hmm. 
I know that this is the first breakout Sabrina year and like, that's great. And you have something to look at, like, you know, New York has something going for it, but I don't know the, the one they've, they've also all year, they've either been this team. I always compare uh, like 2k sliders for Sabrina in particular. I'm like, there are games where she forgets that she left her sliders at 12. And then there are games that she is at a 99. Like she's either the best shooter that the league has, or she's so off. Um, <laughs> so I think that's kind of what spoke to what the, the series has been so far for these two teams though. Right. They go out and upset Chicago and then they lose by almost 40. That, that is the New yeah. York experience. That's yeah. What, well, Haley, when you said that, you know, I about, you know, it's a clear team. I was like, which game did you see? Because the <laughs> New York game with holding Chicago to zero points for the last three minutes of the game after the incredible Maureen Johannes pass that I am still I could watch it on repeat over and over and in my dreams it was beautiful and so the chicago sky were stunned they couldn't score anymore after that so if she makes another pass like that they we got some issues but the WNBA playoff record margin of win like you have to be if you're in new york you have to be so <laughs> depleted after that yes. you're gonna try to be super hype we're at home but there. It, it's like it's in the history books. Like right. it was the worst loss ever. Yeah. Um, and you have to bet on Candace Parker. Like if in this type of situation, in this type of closeout game, I put my money on Candace Parker. I don't know if she's going to have a 40 piece, but she's going to make an impact that comes from experience, that comes from being an MVP, that comes from being a champion. And even the the people on the sky – you know, who have only been here once before or are maybe newer, she's going to know the right things to say. She's going to know the right times to uh, make adjustments, to switch, to talk to James Wade, who just won executive of the year. Um, I, I think Chicago has to come out of this. I don't know how much further they go, but they're going to they're going to beat the Liberty tonight. That's a. Yeah, I don't think it's going to be statement. close. Yeah. If I was on the Liberty, I would already have my apartment packed up. <laughs> <laughs> you, you you guys are laughing, but I'm so serious. No, she's like, it's like, actually, actually not a joke. For, former, former, former New York Liberty player Marissa Coleman says the Liberty <laughs> pack it up. <laughs> yeah. Hey, those, those extra days matter when you only have seven days to get overseas. Your shit is packed in your car and ready to get to its destination. <laughs> yeah. Damn. Yeah, you're actually Damn. not being hyperbolic. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> um, okay, before we go, I really want to talk to y'all about your rec league. <laughs> I have, have heard... You have a game tonight, but continue, Haley. We're undefeated. Let them know. <laughs> What's your team name? It's See You in the Lobby, just like our, our show's name. Okay. See You in the Lobby, the, the ode to the Diana Taurasi uh, yelling at a ref, telling her to see her in the lobby. <laughs> um, Jordan told me that this rec team has other W players, and I'm sure that you have. Uh, well, well, listen, we're going through a maybe contract divorce with Crystal Langhorn, but we'll, we'll, oh. we'll, 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 get, we'll get to that. Lang came to one game and was like, Yeah, this isn't for me. Like, my days, my playing days are over. Um, we were actually, she hits, she hits, she hits the first three. Today. She hits the first three of the entire league and she's just like, oh my God. And like she hadn't played in like two years and she was like surprising <laughs> herself. We're like, yeah, like you're it's almost like you're a WNBA All-Star. <laughs> it's almost like you're a professional. <laughs> my question is, is Elena Beard just putting clamps on regular people that just got off their nine to five job, full court press? showing why she was a multiple winner of defensive player of the year or is she taking it easy on him so we're gonna see tonight because elena had this is gonna be her first game that she's shown up to to her defense you know she, she's busy trying to bring a team to, to the bay area and she has a two-year-old so i'll let her slide on that but <laughs> she's a child <laughs> she has some other important things to do but she'll be there tonight so we we can circle back and let you know 
And if she's still in peak Elena Beard defensive form. What Melissa is too polite to say is that she's had to fucking carry us. For <laughs> 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 we may have a guest appearance tonight. Oh. Monique Curry may may play with us tonight. So we might have a guest appearance. So we'll see. And we could we we could use it because listen, the rest of the team is really lacking. <laughs> Matt, what's are your you game like? Compare yeah, I was your... like, are you talking about yourself? Give yourself a player comp. This is one of my fir- my favorite first date questions. Like when Sabrina go Draymond like, oh. and say John Morant. <laughs> you have had. Um, it's not good. This has been a brutal. This has been a brutal uh, league for me personally. But shout out to the Volo League for posting the one three pointer that I did make. So, like, <laughs> as long as you don't listen to this pod, do you think I'm good? <laughs> hey that's why it's highlight highlight mixtapes are a thing for a reason they don't show your yeah. misses um so if it's just on a loop of that one three-pointer with great music we'll never know we'll never know we could flip it so it looks like it's another three-pointer you know like flip the video <laughs> yep. Honestly, the camera angle. if you like if you put me in a different colored shirt it's like oh like he couldn't have done that on the same editing <laughs> is yeah yeah Yes, yeah, so they made fun, many though. advances. <laughs> <laughs> do you do you ever get people upset with how talented you are? Like if okay. I was in a like the people who I usually play in rec league basketball work at Salesforce. Like they're <laughs> they're just they're just people. We, <laughs> okay, we've noticed. So we played one team last week, and we only won by. I don't know, 40, ten or whatever it was, okay, yeah. and, and they were uh, they were winless the whole season, and they lost the game before that by like forty. So we're like, all right, something's up. And we talked to them after the game, and we're like, do you guys play on this team? And they're like, oh no, our friends just texted us and told us that we needed to be here today. Like everybody, <laughs> everybody's recruiting the friends who are like six two who didn't actually sign up for the league, and they're like, we need you guys available tonight. Like we're, we're, play- we're playing the WNBA team. <laughs> I, I get where they're coming from. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> no, yeah, it's funny. We yeah, we walked in, and then the team we played the first week, that's probably the second best team in the league. They had a whole new team, and one of the guys <laughs> afterwards was like recruiting me to play in his other rec league, and he's like, yeah, like our friend just asked if we could come play. It was like four of them. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone's hitting up the group chats. Like, do you know a tall person? Like, are they available tonight? <laughs> Yeah, but then they don't know the scouting report that Monique is just going to show up. And they're like, oh, my wait. God, we can't and Mo win. Is, Mo is like an A-tier shit talkers, too. So I'm so excited to be there for this one. <laughs> just one more person. Me. Literally, like, <laughs> has no idea. Always- what the, this other team, like, has no idea what they're getting into. Like, a professional <laughs> basketball player is going to be shit talking them. It's unbelievable. But of course, they're the they're the guys on the team that think they're so good, mm-hmm. all because mm-hmm. they just like bully ball, and it's just like, all right, congratulations, like, yeah, hold this, good job, hold this L. This <laughs> gets into this shit, some shit. It's really funny. I love because it's just nothing. annoying. Like <laughs> last week, Matt didn't even know this happened. There was this guy on the other team, not good at basketball, but thought he was, and Matt subbed out. No, the guy was subbing out. And his teammate was like, who do you, who'd you have? And he pointed to Matt, he said, I got the short guy. And I just looked at like, that just wasn't, ne- that, that wasn't necessary. So I'm like, all right, whatever. So later on in the game, he points to me and says, I got the girl. Mm. So I'm like, you mean woman? Like, that, what, like, and it was like the way he said, like pointing me, looked in his eyes. Mm-hmm. And then the next play down the court, I said as loud as I possibly could, I got the boy. <laughs> he was pissed. <laughs> like, pissed. I, I, if a, I don't know if a human could be any more mad than he was. I'm like, what, what, so now you see, now you see, like, <laughs> but yeah, it, it's been fun. We got a last regular season game tonight, 750. Lots yeah. on the line. What's y'all's <laughs> playoff format? <laughs> Fuck we don't Rocky know. Ball. We're asking that. I'm about to find out. Apparently, yeah. Matt said it's like AAU style, where all the games are one day. I don't think I my think body can oh, yeah. that. Yep, that was my my co-ed league. That's exactly how it was. You had a, a break, and then you had the championship game at like 10 p.m. That's 7:50 is a good time because rec leagues are horrible game times typically. 
Oh, God. I don't know if my body can sustain multiple games in one day anymore. <laughs> yeah, I haven't done that since like high school. I can't. We didn't even do that in college rec league. It would it would be spread out. Yeah, that's like that's a lot. I'm surprised that W hasn't tested that yet. <laughs> 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 they're, they're gonna fly the winter of storm aces out on spirit and they're like well you're playing the sky tonight now <laughs> oh my god well, if three you're, series all in one day oh if you want to start a change.org and you're a because of your playoff format marissa send it to us and we'll sign it perfect appreciate it <laughs> Thank you guys. This was Yeah, so thank fun. you so much. Thank you guys. Oh my gosh. I'm sweating from laughing so hard. <laughs> I, the worst part is I could actually see someone brought that up in a meeting. Someone what? brought it up like maybe if they're close enough, mm -hmm. could they play in the same day? Could we have a <laughs> 9 a.m. playoff game? Some, like, oh, someone had, definitely brought that up. We have if we continue to have morning playoff games, we could have a night one. Delta has a special today where <laughs> coupon code. Not Delta. <laughs> Kathy has coupons. I can't. Delta's too too expensive. <laughs> Kathy definitely has coupons. Oh man. Speaking of people who probably like Joe Rogan. <laughs> totally. Oh my 1, god. Oh, I'm just call. saying. They've had dinner parties probably. Oh yeah, one hundred percent. Free thinker parties. What a place. What a special, special basketball league we love. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Why do we do this to ourselves? Gosh. Um, send send us videos from your game tonight. Well, dude, we better have enough subs because I haven't been able to take video on the bench because we haven't had any subs. Mm. <sighs> worst. <laughs> no, worst. Yeah, that and rec leagues that genuinely is the worst. I've only I only play soccer. Um so it's a different kind of like if you don't have a sub it's a unique kind of suffering um <laughs> especially since i play midfield like you yeah you need to recruit benches there's like a really kind of desperate recruiting in rec leagues isn't there where you're like just begging your friends to come like you just have to stand out there like we yeah. just need someone to stand so i could get a break that we happened. played this one league where um afterwards like everyone would go for beers and that was like the incentive for some of the people um <laughs> and i remember when you guys were talking about like uh teams going against you guys and being like oh shit i actually had the pleasure of being on a team one time randomly like i was one of the people who was texted from my friend sam who actually was or maybe still is i'm not sure rob plinka's assistant um wow yeah i played on his team because we played a little bit together in a ringer league and i he had like the best women there, like pl players from North Carolina, oh, from shit. fucking Maryland. <laughs> yeah, like just like great soccer schools. And it was very intimidating. But the good news is like midfield, I just really had to set them up. So, <laughs> but yeah, it was yeah. I was like on the impressive team. So I feel like I kind of. I'm in your shoes, Matt. Listen, nice. we need to win by 20 tonight, Matt. Otherwise, it's not we haven't really them. blown anyone out like super embarrassingly yet. I want to <laughs> buy a jersey. You want to buy a Z in the lobby jersey? <laughs> don't, even, don't even laugh. Don't even laugh. Our boss was like ready to make uh, gear for us. And we're like, um, I don't Me? know if we could do that. No, <laughs> I want, I'd buy it. I'd buy it. <laughs> It is embarrassing. Yeah, I will say then you've got to like do something else mentally to have the upper hand because when you look too coordinated as a rec team, it is embarrassing. You know, or it's like not intimate. You lose some of the intimidation factor. You want to look disheveled. You yeah. know, like you barely care. Everybody wear a white you know? shirt. Oh, yeah. I wouldn't be able to pull that off because I care way too much. <laughs> <laughs> and Matt, I we're think... gonna have fans tonight. We're gonna have fans. Oh, we should have, man. Some He's of coming. my Maryland crew wants to come. Like this, oh, please. Uh, Libby, who you met, who's one of the ADs. Oh, yeah, yeah, she's cool. <laughs> she's bringing another Maryland uh, athletic worker person. <laughs> I was, um, take video I, first of all, should I open it up on Twitter? I really thought about it. I was like, there's yeah, say last regular season again, who wants to come through? We have three tickets. <laughs> you so know funny. people would want those, too. Ooh, so Do funny. it, Matt. Let's see what happens. 
I honestly might. I'm kind of I'm having the energy of like, eh, fuck it. Last thing, <laughs> last game. Last game. But we'll let you know. All right, y'all. I'm gonna go pick up my dog. Oh, oh thanks, guys. Thanks, y'all. Thank it was you, really guys. fun. Alrighty. Appreciate Bye. you guys. Bye.